This is the Skywatcher uh, ATED uh, semi apochromatic telescope, and uh, I'm using it with the big uh, with the Teleview 40 millimeter plus. Gives very good images. The only thing is that sometimes it is slipped in the past, used to because it's a Crayford processor based on friction. So I have to take it out and uh, smoothen up the underneath here where the friction contact between this wheel and the tube is, uh, the focuser tube is uh, established. So it now works and uh, you can lock it also. There is a locking mechanism, this screw there. Beautiful telescope, gives good views, easy to manipulate. Of course, uh, I have now tested this and I think my Lyra 102 F11 uh, has less chromatic aberration than this. This doesn't have much, but the clear clarity of image, brightness of the image, and in the Lyra is equal or better than this. Surprise. The only f advantage this one has is short tube, shorter tube. It's easier to manage, easier to carry, easier to everything. So other than that, Lyra is better. So, nice telescope and of course beautiful. And uh, by the way, just to avoid the loss of the uh, eyepiece cap in the dark, I just use this to put it on work. I don't need to put it all the time. When I'm observing, I don't need um, It's indoors and But the caps get lost, so I don't want to risk that. This is expensive eyepiece <laughs> The second hand even it is 80 pound If you can, if you're lucky 80 pound is more than that 110 pound probably Good for bunny viewing. And this Dapsonium mount is a Skywatcher flex tube 130p. That is really good. Uh, it's a folding telescope. The Dapsonium mount of it is really good. It can take up to 8 kilograms. This is probably 3 kilograms or less. Even. Easily takes it. An amazing piece of engineering. It's made in China. Beautiful. Better than the Unitron, which was made in the Japan. Technology, everything is transferred. You know, it's like a, it's like a soul. It's like a wind. Can go anywhere. Now the technology is in the Unitron. Is built in China. Look at this CNC machined. Lovely. Tube rings, four inch, and it's all here. This is a Skywatcher. Uh, 60 by 30, I think, 6 by 30. Uh, um, finder, I've, I've adjusted it for here. Anyway, uh, this Takahashi, really good quality. I'm waiting a little bit, uh, Venus comes out of the uh, leafy parts. And so I can actually go and uh, have observation without the leaves changing the you know the from time to time the cause a little bit disturbance so i'm waiting for that but you can see the quality in the takashi like this beautiful offices and this is a vixen npl 40 meter nlv 40 millimeter and this is the Alter Prism, Alter Prism 2 inch, diagonal prism, really good for planetary work. So everything in this system that I have is perfect. Look at the size of these knobs, dual uh, adjustment knobs. So really good. I'm looking forward to the rest of the session when the planet Venus passed from the tree so I can go and observe it. This is a Lyra 102 uh, F11 
telescope, refractor telescope. Um, it has some features which I'd like to mention. First of all, it is a long tube telescope. It's a chromatic telescope, but because it has a long focal length, uh, it's a doublet lens, of course, in front. Uh, practically, it acts and works like a upper chromat, meaning that there is no color uh, fringe or chromatic aberration, as we call it. The other feature of it is that beautiful, smooth feather touch uh, um, Crayford Dual Speed Focuser. That just on its own is, is a lot. That's probably cost around 150, 60 pound on its own. Then we come to the tube rings. These tube rings are CNC machined. The movements of this telescope and this Dobsonian mount is so smooth. It's because the weight is right for this. Spotter smooth. Perfect. Okay, we loosen up this screw and then the dust cap, sorry, uh, the dew shield will come down. Let us go and have a look in the mirror and the lens. 102 millimeter of achromatic doublet lens. And that's the lens cap. Completely protected now. It goes back to this box. I will unscrew it from here. I remove the star diagonal. And that's it. That's what will be done. We get ready to do some more painting here in the coronavirus lockdown. I'm now uh, looking at the planet Venus with the Takashi multi-coated lung eye relief 7.5 millimeter, 52 degrees eyepiece through the Lyra 102 F11 telescope, refracted telescope. And the image quality I was comparing with the Teleview Nagler 7 millimeter this is the original, or as they call it, Tape 1, uh, Nagler. Uh, with the Takashi, the horns of the crescent of the Venus is more visible. The image with the Nagler is a little bit brighter and cleaner, but the clarity and the details I can see, sharp focus, in this Takashi is better than this. Both of them are good, uh, just a slightly this is better. Uh, I can see the horns of the... Uh, crescent of the Venus clear and the lens looks almost identical in size the eye relief of the Takashi of course is 20 millimeter with this one is uh, uh, 13 millimeter or 11 millimeter the field of view of this is 82 and with this is 52 I don't feel that uh, that is affecting the view as much as I expected. A tad better in this. Although it's not as bright as of, as of the Nagler, Teleview Nagler, but the clarity and the sharpness of the focus is better. This telescope, of course, I have to show that is a feather touch uh, dual speed Crayford um, focuser. That is 10 to 1, so 10 turn of this equals to 1 turn of this. And uh, yeah, I'm really impressed. Both of them are good. 
uh, with this one I can even look 2.3.2 and I could get an image but the image was very uh, swiftly moving this is an Dobsonian mount for the Skull Watcher Skymax 130 flex tube and anyway I'm continuing to observe and I think Takashi a tad slightly an epsilon better than the Nagler